Hi. In this video, we'll be getting started with the data unit. We'll learn what data is and why it's relevant to computer science. So first, let's do a quick recap. Computers store all information using only binary digits, using only zeros and ones. So we've seen how information, no matter what it is, whether it's sentences or images, uh, can be represented digitally using only zeros and ones. Once information is converted into digital form, into only bits, then two computers on the same network, such as the internet, are actually able to send digital information between each other. And this is a very useful way for computers and humans to communicate. Now, in this unit, we'll be seeing how once that information is in digital form, once this data is in digital form, computers can actually be used to collect, store, manipulate, and visualize this data in order to answer questions and gain knowledge about the world. So, First off, what exactly is data? Well, data is really just information, such as numbers, words, measurements, observations. It's just useful information that is in a computer-readable form. So what do I mean by computer-readable form? Well, there's human-readable and computer-readable. So human-readable information are things that humans can read, but computers aren't really good at reading. Things like books, notebooks, physical photographs, and voice. These are information that's useful to humans, but computers can't really understand it. Computer-readable information is really just numbers, and specifically binary numbers. Remember, computers store all information using only zeros and ones. So the challenge here is to make information digital. We want to take this useful, human-readable information and convert it into digital information, into digital data, so that computers can store it. And we've seen how we can do this. For example, you can take an image, and represent it using only zeros and ones. And the way we do that is we take every single tiny pixel in the image, every single tiny color, and represent that color using three different values, the red, the green, and the blue of that color. So we have three different values. Each of those values can be represented using eight binary digits. And so we have the first eight bits representing the red, the next eight, the green, and the final eight, the blue. And from that, we have a 24-bit pixel. And there we can make an entire image where each 24 bits encodes one pixel color. And then we have an entire image using only zeros and ones. And this is just one example. We are constantly finding ways to turn human-readable, unstructured data into computer-readable structured data. Things like song files, video files, image files, text files, big spreadsheets with measurements and statistics and observations. These are all ways that we've found we can take human-readable, meaningful information and convert it into only zeros and ones so that it can be stored on a computer, so it can be stored as data. So we've seen how exactly data can be turned into zeros and ones. We've seen how that data can be sent across a network. In this unit, we'll really take a step back, forget about the zeros and ones, and really look at the impacts and the cool things we can do with data once we analyze it and process it with computers. So what's cool is that once data is in a computer-readable form, once data is structured in a uniform way, we can write programs that store, process, manipulate, and visualize the data. And we can get really cool things out of this. We can answer questions and learn from it. So the idea here is almost every program interacts with data. Generally, all programs will have input data and output data. So input data can be anything. It can be spreadsheets. It could be images represented digitally. It could be maybe the user moves the mouse, and that generates some numbers that are sent in as input data. Maybe the user types on the keyboard and that generates input data. Or it could even be an HTTP request coming in over a network onto a server that you're writing. These are all examples of input data that will kick off a program. Once you have this input data, once you have this, this information, a program will take that input data and do something interesting with it. It'll read that input, whether it's spreadsheets or images or mouse movement, and it will process that data. It will analyze and manipulate it and based on what it receives, it will produce output data. And again, that output data is going to be just zeros and ones. But depending on what type of file it is, that could represent a spreadsheet. That could represent a brand new image. It could represent a brand new sound. It could be sending sounds to speakers that will generate vibrations. Uh, or it could be sending out an HTTP response back over the network to whatever device it received. This is the general story of a program. So what are some examples of this? Well. You could have a program that processes an image. It takes in this image as input data, reads over the numbers, and manipulates them a little bit to make the image brighter. Or there's even programs that will analyze these numbers and locate things inside the image, locate things like edges or shadows or even faces. There are algorithms that can take a series of numbers that are representing an image and locate faces. 
So these are just some cool things we can do with digital data. So why is data relevant? Well, data and information facilitate the creation of knowledge. When we have a lot of data and we can analyze that data using a computer, using a program, we can facilitate and create new knowledge. We can recognize patterns. We can gain new insights and knowledge. We can predict future events. We can even realize and solve problems, real problems about our world. We live in a time where there is a massive wealth of data. There are massive data sets of digital data that store information such as transaction histories, personal data, medical data, web browsing data that is collected about you when you are visiting websites, and various measurements about our world, things like temperature and currents and you know various observations about the world. And all of this data is stored in a digital form waiting for us to analyze it and write a program that does something interesting with it. And this provides a lot of opportunities for us. These large data sets provide opportunities to extract information, identify trends that are going on, make predictions about based on the past of what will happen in the future, make connections between two types of data that seem to be unconnected, and we can recognize and solve problems. And computing tools are the essential part here. Computing tools are essential when working with large data sets in order to do any, anything meaningful with them. Without computers, no one person could sit there and pour through the massive wealth of data that we have. It would be very difficult for a person to pull out useful information. But with a computer, a computer can analyze billions of data points so quickly and identify useful things about it. So computing tools provide ways for us to search, filter, store, and visualize the data. Let's look at some examples of this. So one relevant example that we see this in is agriculture. So here, this is a computational tool that farmers can use that will visualize the state of their land. So here we have actual sensors that are collecting data about the world. That data gets stored as just plain old numbers in a spreadsheet, and a program will analyze those numbers in the spreadsheet and produce this human-readable, useful visualization. And from this, we can make decisions about how to farm. Same thing with health and medicine. We can collect data about the outbreaks of disease and actually make predictions about where it will go next and make decisions about what steps we should take to prevent disease. Now this is great, we can do really great and useful things with all this data, but there are concerns to having all this data stored as well. Storing and processing these massive data sets efficiently is, is very challenging. And the way we usually approach this challenge is using databases and database languages. So this is a computational tool to allow us to store a lot of data and extract data from these massive databases quickly. Another concern is keeping this data private. A lot of this data you don't want public. It's things like medical records, transaction histories. And so generally what we do here is we will either encrypt the data when it's stored in a database so that no one else can read it, and we will also anonymize the data. So we'll pull out personal identifying things like names and birthdays and social security numbers. That will never get stored. And one last concern is really not everyone knows how much of their personal data is actually being tracked. And to solve this, you really need to read the privacy policy of the services you're using. You need to know the websites you visit, the devices you use, what information are those services collecting about you, and what are they allowed to do with it? Are they allowed to sell it to advertisers, or are they going to keep it for themselves? So storing data and using computational tools to pull knowledge and information out of data has a lot of pros and cons. So that is a high-level crash course introduction to data. And in this unit, we'll be diving in and learning more about what we can do with data and computational tools.